I'll, I'll, I'll send you a copy, right, Gene? Sounds good. Welcome everyone, the Galactic Talk session 34. So today our star speaker, Gene Decold from Colorado. So welcome, Gene. Thank you, Taino. So ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna check with Gene on uh, several topics. So we're, we're gonna check sub-Tyrrhenian, all right, cities, inner earth, and an overview as well on the latest operation and updates with the dumps and mystical sites in place at Colorado. All right. So Gene, would you like, oh, first of all, Gene, uh, this is worth probably mentioning to the, uh, to the people. So your last session that when you came on the Galactic Talk, several people from different places, you know, all over the world, was just really uh, glad. I'm, I'm gonna share it. You know, it was just glad about uh, your content and who you are, right? So probably just change this to the people. So from Blaine Daniels, I love Gene's sense of humor. Uh, to Sal and Jones, you know, may God bless each and everyone. All right. Uh, Dale Rich, thank you for an Amazon show. Gene is such a special being. Uh, from Serbia, you see, <laughs> damn, just missed this. God bless you guys, all right, from Serbia. And Deborah, Gene the Code is so knowledgeable and humble about it, you know. Johnny Walker is, as well. So, uh, Gene, a lot of people, you know, from, I'm seeing it, from different places, uh, love uh, what you do, you see, bringing that truth to the people. So, thank you for this, Gene. Oh, thank you, Taino. You know, it's um, so such an honor to have people that appreciate the information that I'm trying to share for the world. You know, the cabal doesn't like it much. They are, you know, taking out a lot of like now the gene decode seems to be starting to be an algorithm they put in. So like some YouTubes are being pulled just because it has that in the title of the show. So, you know, unfortunately, but, you know, if people can back up on BitChute and Rumble, that would help, or what other platform they might have, and then additionally now PayPal and Venmo, which is, of course, an ex just an extension, barred us from life, <laughs> so it's like, and I mean stuff, you know, that we had, like, in our real name a decade ago, they barred that, too, <laughs> I'm like, Okay, well, I mean, you know, you get a large percentage, it seems like a stupid business move to me, but okay, you know, you get a large percentage of everything, they get like a few percent, so, okay, you don't want me to use you, I won't use you, we got uh, Stripe, we have Kofi, and we're looking at another system now. So, okay, we go somewhere else and give, give our uh, percentage somewhere else for people that want to, you know, so many kind people. It's really a, uh, humbling that are helping to get the website for the Blessed for Service Coordinator team up. We're 
it finally looking like we're <laughs> this week. So and I keep saying this, it's like this one, this one <laughs> it keeps going forward. But we got like all kind of like same in the pro, you know, because the IT designer guy, he actually is writing most of the apps. He's not off the shelf. And it was just sending, we were ready. And then it would, you go into the website, we're in beta testing and you go in and it would send you from page to page automatically without you doing anything. And he's just fine tooth combed all the code and couldn't figure out any reason at all. So he called me up late at night, goes, I can't fix it. I don't know what to do. Because could you do the invocation? I go, Why, how about just put the invocation on every page of the website? <laughs> He did that, got up the next morning, it was fixed. <laughs> I was like, I don't really? understand, but it's great. <laughs> I go, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, so that's how it works sometimes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, and by the way, Gene, just to let you know. So um a few people are hearing from the chat, right? So Q sent me from Connecticut, Jody, Miss Vicky, uh C Jacobs, Arms, Jody uh luisa akara talib bay all right and pr proud patriot so uh, just to let you know and someone mentioned yeah you send me been following you know your work for two and a half years all right so just for you to know wow thank you that's um kind of mind-boggling for me if people follow me but i'm, I'm really honored it's like almost uh, feel like overwhelmed with it sometime that you know people because for 30 years people roll their eyes and walk away it's like now people are like okay so you can definitely tell we're in a great awakening where people are waking up and wanting to know the truth and willing yeah. to open their mind to hear you know that there is something uh that is outside what the mainstream media and the uh, Hollywood and the stars, they, you know, like they thought we would forever follow the stars. And we found out what the stars are really about. I mean, it is horrific. The majority of them, there are a few really good ones, like John Bott and a few others that are really fine people. And Mel Gibson and, and those that are talking about what these big stars are doing. But overall, it's terrible. So, yeah. you know. And I've been trying to tell people and y'all, you know, the, the immensity of it makes it, it like up until people really start wake up impossible for most people to believe. Mm -hmm. It's like Hitler said, you know, make a lie so big. If you want to control people, you got to make a lie so big that if people ever in a, a control, rewrite the history, control all the input school, everything else so that, you know, the lie is so big that if they ever stumble on the truth, they can't possibly believe it. And that's exactly what it was when I woke up in 1990 to this. I was like, this can't be real. It, I mean, it was horrific. I mean, it was it was obvious to me, but I, I you know, I, I wanted it not to be real. Like, it can't be. I'm going to prove it wrong. And all I did is prove it absolutely true to, you know. And so it just now that people are waking up and, you know, I always get many, many emails every day in the Bless for Service, many, every email showing all kinds of amazing things that are shown on so many interview. Now you can, it's coming out in the open with the crafts taking out domes and all kinds of stuff. So it is quite amazing. Indeed, Gene. So for the people, um, please your reserve your questions uh, at the end, right? So we're going to go for an hour and a half all right trying to cover those big uh, topics so gene if you don't mind would you would you want to probably tackle first uh the updates with the dumps right yes that sounds perfect and by the way gene i've seen uh quite some operations uh in the uh, Russia area, even here in the uh, the Rockies, you know, on the uh, Canada side. So, Gene, do you want to go? Do you want to share your? Because I already share it, but do you want to share probably your page on the USGS? Yes, map? I'll share mine and go through it. All right, uh, I'll give you. Go ahead, Gene.
So you should be able to see my screen, yes? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so you can see again, they're working on Iceland again. Also that dumb here connects straight to this one uh, just by uh, going towards Scotland, towards the Glasgow area and that goes up mm -hmm. under towards Glasgow, as you can see here, 10 kilometer again, of course. Um, then from there, that's um, this one here is part of the Vatican dome that goes from the, from the Vatican through Albania, down through the Isle of Crete and you know, splits off and goes through Libya, Tunisia, and comes up Morocco, goes up through the, under Gibraltar and in Gibraltar, actually part of Gibraltar itself is hollow. They've got tunnels and stuff inside that. <clears throat> then they're also going through uh, this one here in Turkey. Um, but the big one that I'm noticing um, today uh, in going on is this takeout in, it's massive, I mean, in uh, Iran here, you can see. So this is 6.3 and these are all at 10. So this is a massive, massive takeout. And then of course, ongoing in Afghanistan, as you can see with the Taliban, you know, trying to free their country and keep the Pakistanis from coming through the tunnels of systems coming in. Mm -hmm. And then they're continuing also in Myanmar and um, that they're getting deeper there. A while back, those were at 10, but they're going up into the Golden Triangle area in Laos and taking out stuff in there too as well. And then um, also in the US and Canada, there's a lot of facilities being taken down and there are a lot of craft trying to escape. So they have these negative values. A lot of times they'll say, you know, just explosion. But I mean, Oklahoma, they say it's quarries. There's like quarries everywhere, apparently all over Oklahoma. <laughs> it's like, uh, I never knew there were that many quarries in Oklahoma, really. I thought it was kind of like, I don't know, but there's a lot of negative values there. Um, and I'll, I'll update and show you what I mean. This is just the last week here. So, you know, in Stanley, Idaho, they're continuing that facility. Uh, they've been working on that for a year or two. It's um, such a massive facility, but it going up in Canada and even on the highways, I mean, literally they're taking craft that are coming up under the maglevs that run under the highways. They have exits for the craft to get out across the river from the highway there in Princeton. And you can see they're taking those out too the Alliance is taking these craft out before they can get away. Um, like here again, uh, in Ab Abbotsford in Canada. Um, so there's a um, lot and lot of activity going on where there, you know, so if I reset, for example, if we go to a larger time scale, like the last month, it becomes astounding how much is going on. <clears throat> Yeah, you, you, you're right on that one. Yeah, so now you can see, like, again, that, you know, you can actually see the line of the tunnels with the one in Stanley and things that they're taking out. And now the level of negative values, especially over the upper part of Washington State, is astounding. You have a massive amount of negative values, and some of them are pretty high up there, you know. There's a lot going on. And, you know, I'm looking at um, Mount Rainier. As far as I can see on volcano sites, it's not erupting, but you've got a lot of activity that should be like erupting if you have that much activity that's like actual, you know, volcanic type situation going on. Um, then, you know, mm -hmm. again, all these massive negative values you see of craft trying to get away. It's pretty stunning. So, and then, like I said, Oklahoma, when you go to the last month, it gets really crazy. So now you can see that you have like lots of quarry blasts, <laughs> a lot of quarry. It's kind of swampy areas, what I thought about. I guess they have quarries and swamps, huh? <laughs> This is just me. Maybe maybe it's just my mind does looks at things sometimes and sees things oddly. Yeah, you know, it's just, but it seems kind of obvious to me. 
And, you know, if we go back over to those areas, like I was saying, where the Vatican Dome goes from Albania and goes down through Greece and then through the Isle of Crete, as I was saying, and they've been working on that, <clears throat> goes over through Libya to Morocco. And you can see there, and it goes mm -hmm. up to Gibraltar. If you go to a, the last two months ago, you can see them going up through in this way as well. So there's quite a lot of activity going on of taking out things in Italy and, you know, all over, even up into Scotland, of course, coming, continuing toward Iceland, also La Palma. Um, most people are aware of that. Um, it, of course, they're saying, oh, it's gonna crash into the sea and make a tsunami. Actually, the Alliance is doing is hitting the levels one after another and filling them up with the lava from the lava tube. So they're destroying the dome by putting it back to the way it used to be. And it, you know, it's a grid pattern that you see in those eruptions because the dome is, you know, has layers and it has levels and it has hallways and all of that. So and doors, as you blow the doors, it makes a grid pattern because those are evenly spaced. So it becomes quite obvious there. <clears throat> If you look at that one there, that, you know, there's La Palma. They're working that one too. So they're actually taking the pressure off the, that from erupting. It is erupting, but they're taking the pressure off by flooding the dumb with it. <clears throat> also working in Ethiopia and at uh, Eritrea. So, yeah. wow, it is pretty stunning what's going on. I mean, there's so much activity and so much of the, Alliance is taking out so many dumps, it's really beautiful. But this one here, as I was saying, is the biggest one. That's a child trafficking area where they're rescuing children and taking out the dump as, as they take the children out. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Gene, no, you, you could stay actually on that page. Um, or you want to see more? Uh, not to see more, just probably to uh, chat a little bit because um, people on the chat are stating, you know, <laughs> British Columbia, if the floods over there, are they, you know, related to the activity that's been going on uh, with the dumps? Yeah, it does cause, you know, disturbance and, you know, the craft being taken out causes atmospheric issues. Mm -hmm. Um and then that often will cause, you know, the ionization due to them getting, you know, the anti-gravity drive systems cause ionization, like mm -hmm. big clouds around the craft often. And when you have the big battles, like the coordinators um, in Southern Colorado saw big battle uh, and they had pictures of all the clouds that are really oddly shaped, perfect triangular clouds. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't remember seeing the perfect triangle cloud before, 20 years ago, maybe it's me. <laughs> so maybe I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so, you know, you have a lot of things. And then of course, then that does create condensation, especially in a mountain range area like that, uh, Singer de Cristo range there. So then you do have a lot of flooding and things going on and rain and, you know, things and depending on the areas where you're at. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Gene, someone is asking, uh, Rarrington, UK. Well, you just mentioned, you know, Glasgow and how it was connected or it is connected to the one on Iceland. Uh, you got something, Gene, on the UK? Yeah, that's actually a dumb that's located there. Um, that's near, uh, I can't pronounce it. I'll just spell it. L Lock Gilfeed, I guess. L-O-C-H-G-I-L-P-H-E-A-D. So that actually is that where it comes up from the lock, where the submarines would go over to Glasgow and the dome is under Glasgow. So I'm, you know, as they work this, I'm expecting to see something later in Glasgow. All right. And um, with that being said, yeah. So someone's saying, I used to live in Gorris Covered, and apparently there was an underground dome factory. Okay. So, all right. So that's all good. So, Gene, with that, regarding this, so that was the update for the domes. Uh, let's talk now. Um, 
I can share a picture if you'd like or a video. Oh, sure, sure, I'll sure. I think this is off of TikTok that somebody posted a TR3B taking out a dumb entrance. So it's kind of interesting. Uh huh. And could you share? Because not probably not everyone is familiar with the uh, three or uh, three or three. So would you mind, Gene, sharing what this ship is and how does it function? Uh, TR-3B is an anti-gravity vehicle. If you look up the patent under Salvatore Paitis, it goes into the entire patent for the drive system as well as the entire craft. Um, it was first put out in 1947 when they went to the moon and Mars with that. Um, it's a stealth craft. It can become completely invisible. Um, however, um, they don't have to run, you know, they have regular drive system, but they usually use stealth. And sometimes, you know, like here's one of one that is the stealth isn't working too well. It's kind of half in stealth. So... You can see it's a triangular shaped craft. And this one's, you know, stealth is obviously not completely working perfectly. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and that's built by the US military. So a lot of this is coming out now where people are seeing, you know, the changes and seeing these craft out in the open now. Indeed. And uh, I'm going to share something, Gene, quickly. Sure. Uh, we're going to go now with, because we mentioned, right, the Dom. So it's good to know that um, for the one who's coming on the information, that you have mountains, uh, water course, uh, caves, where you can access um, on the ground cities all right and going through the inner earth gene i'm gonna share a picture that was sent by one of your coordinator two years ago all right sounds great so you know we have this map that's yeah probably in 75 all right so we you had here you know the main tunnels um from this diagram, Gene, was this a ancient Atlant Atlantean um, tunnel system? Yes, that's a very ancient system. Sounds good. So um, this is for the people to have a, I'm going to say, perspective on this topic. And Gene, you know what? Uh, remember, I went on the island and it's... I've seen, I went to one of the caves, Portugal, it's the one in Haiti. Uh, there says, you know, in the Caribbean, it has one of the uh, largest uh, tunnel network, four kilometers. But it's only when I started to uh, get information, you see intuitively over there, bit by bit, that I found out, like, you know, it is a, um, it is a, entrance uh to uh underground cities below the island of 80 could you please share gene now you know the whole aspect of underground cities they're real it's not myth it's not you know consp conspiracy but it's really real so i'll let you expand on this gene yeah so, um, and then on your last question, I found a really quickly a video on YouTube that goes into the TR3LB a little better. So people can look at that video here, top secret anti-gravity spy plane video here. If it achieves this along all three axes as well. So I was just talking about- It was designed it to be a subsonic stealth spy plane. For one thing, it's yeah, right. No, usually it goes more than some sort by quite a bit. So that's kind of you know along the lines of where it originally was talking about. But now, if you go look at the here's the patent 
that's going into the patent by Salvatore Pais in the US Patent Office. So obviously does exist uh, inertial mass reduction. It reduces the mass of the vehicle. Uh, usually this is like a noble gas that's supercharged between two hulls. That's why in the 40s, they, the Solar Warden used submarines and you know they have an inner and outer hull and welded the ballast tank shut and then used the same type of system there to mm -hmm. be able to lift whole submarines into space. So you know it's going through and explaining it all here. So on the inner cities and that, you know, you have the, of course, the low level stuff, which would be things like under DIA, which goes down to 80 miles deep, layer after layer getting bigger and bigger than the city itself by quite a bit by the time you get all the way down. So you have that. And uh, additionally, you have um, the hollow earth inner city and continents. So there's a massive, you know, most people don't realize you know, that the earth is hollow. It's another well-kept secret by the cabal. They don't want people to realize that the earth is actually a hollow, you know, thing. And, you know, it's based on the nature of how things form, when they form, you know. So here's a video I found to explain it a little bit for people. So this is just a person showing in a microgravity, a rotating ball and, First, this is just air bubbles in the ball of water. And you can see as it starts to rotate, the air bubble, it acts like a centrifuge and it's driving because the air is at a different density. It's driving the air to the center. And so you can see it literally going from pole to pole on the axis of rotation. And it's starting to, you know, looks like it's starting to try to break the surface tension and open and make it like a donut. And then later what he does in what they do in this experiment is they put in tea leaves now. And now because tea leaves are a lighter density than the water, they go like the continental plates, they go to the surface of the, and then you have the, the bubbles, the air in the middle. So you have a hollow ball or a donut. Now he puts in, but they put in vitamins and because of the same density, they're rotating in globs around inside, like in the magma, because mm -hmm. it's the same density as the rock surrounding rock, pretty much. So it stays in the middle part. So it's a really good explanation for people to understand why and how the Earth would wind up. And all planets are hollow. That's the difference why they downgrade a Pluto. I mean, they don't really ever explain to why. They downgrade Pluto to a planetoid because it's not hollow. It doesn't have an internal sun. So, you know, I can share if you like. I did a, I'm working on a decode on expanding in hollow Earth. If you want, I can share some of that. It's kind sure. of a work in progress, but I can share a bit of it. I highlighted it some. So entrances into the Earth, uh, the hollow Earth, and others is the cave of the oil birds, Cueva, Cueva de los Tayos in Ecuador in Ecuador, Mount Shasta in California. That's in a uh, goes to the Garthen city of Telos, Manos in Brazil, Mato Grosso in Brazil. That goes to the city of Posid in, inside the earth. Iguacu Falls, um, that's on the border of uh, the border of Brazil and Argentina. Mount Apemio in Italy, the well of Sheshna uh, in Benares, India. That goes to the Agarthan city of Batala, uh, Mongolia. <clears throat> in Mongolia, on the China border, the, goes to the under, there's one that goes to the underground city of Xingha, Xinghua. Rama in India goes to the lost subterranean city, also known as Rama, uh, in the Grasso Plain region, underneath the Pyramid of Egypt, both poles, like you saw because of that rotating water, and under Denver itself. The inner earth continents have been working on getting them laid out and you know so people can have an idea of and the capital cities of them so the primary atlantean where, where the atlanteans after it, the main part of it sunk went inside the earth they have posted which is the uh, the continent our underline and you know <clears throat> it's called posted the continent its capital is also posted same as shoshni uh, shonshi uh, which is the refuge of the Uyghur civilization 
that uh, which are a branch of the Lemurians. And then um, they went there 50,000 years ago and it's uh, entrance is guarded in a Himalayan uh, lamasery and the population of that continent is about three and a quarter million. Then Rama, which is under, is the capital uh, of the continent Shambhala. Now it's a remnant of the surface city of Rama in India, which is located near Jaipur. Uh, the inhabitants are, have classic Hindu features, so it's about a million. Then Shingwa uh, is the capital city and the continent of Shingwa. Uh, remnant, it's a remnant also of the Uyghur civilization. The entrance is located in Mongolia under the Chinese uh, border with a smaller secondary entry from a uh, city uh, on the continent that's under Mount Lassen in California. Agartha, which is a continent and also the capital is also called Agartha. And it's also the capital of the inner earth governments. They have a unified governmental system. The other ones I have, I haven't got like, these are just continents. I don't have the capitals yet. It's Telos, Mabia, Fatala, and Asgard. And then <clears throat> going into, you know, here shows how the earth, you know, as it's spinning like that because its mass is constantly accruing through um, 200, uh, thousand tons of debris falling on the earth every year so it's getting more massive and as it's spinning it's opening up so you can see here the you know everybody knows the atlantic you know how to it fits right in but the pacific also fits so there's the atlantic fit and you can see the entire earth spinning as it originally was and then you can see the continent of uh, antarctica coming out from up in here you can actually see that the Pacific actually all fit together too, Antarctica and South America. Antarctica fits right up in that. And then <clears throat> this is showing the crustal age of the earth. And these are the fits again. So you can see how Antarctica and Australia fit, you know, Australia fits perfectly into the, where the Pacific Ocean is. So the earth used to be much smaller and I'll be doing this full decode that I'm making up when I get my website up. This will be one of my first uh, things I do on deep dive uh, with gene decode on my website. So this is showing the fit and the movements of the oceans as they go. And this is uh, actually uh, Maxlow did this fit showing the expansion tectonics of the earth in this map. So it's really excellent showing the age. So everything that's blue and purple is billions of years old, but everything in green and yellow and orange is under 140 million years old. That's all the oceans. They're, none of them are old. They're relatively new. So the earth, you know, during just 140 million years ago was that big. And now it, you know, once it, it started to the ocean, uh, the, it, the, in, the seas used to be freshwater seas. If you spin a globe, you get these S-shaped seas. And so because it's eroding the rock, the rain and things, it's going to these seas that sat on the surface of the continents. They built up sandstone with the weight of the sandstone and then the water of the seas. The mantle underneath eroded it, got weak. And so eventually the crack got through and the, then the earth could open up and expand. You know, and they say it was all Pangaea, one continent, and the rest was ocean. No, it was all the oceans were on top of the solid plate of the earth, one piece, inside and outside. So, the, you know, they arrange it in some weird thing where some continents move faster and some of them move, move a third of the way around the earth. Some of them don't move at all, like North and South America didn't ever yeah. move at all. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So I go, okay, let me re I'll arrange it in any way I want. I'll make it a chicken. <laughs> Pangea used to be a chicken. <laughs> so to show you, you know, some of the incongruencies with the earth having been the same size with the same gravitational mass, mm -hmm. Um, this is a dragonfly called <laughs> it's like 14 inch wingspan. If, if that were to fly today, if you could get that, you know, cloned, it couldn't fly. It would shred the wings because the atmosphere is too thick and the gravity is too hard. Same thing problem here. These don't have lungs, these centipedes. They have tubes. It, it would suffocate. It couldn't get air all the way through it. Brachiosaurus. 
the bones would turn to powder with that much weight. The head's so far up, unless the entire body was a heart, can't get blood up there. I mean, it, there's a lot of problems. You have this birds, <laughs> I mean, that they can't fly today. I mean, especially when you go into pteranodon, I mean, it's got a massive wingspan. That means they, you know, different gravity a long time ago. And then coming up each year uh, from the Arctic, when the ice caps uh, that is over the Arctic hole melts and breaks up, you have big, huge freshwater icebergs. This is a Christy Cat track going down here. Christy Cat would be about that high. <laughs> that thing is miles. Seawater will freeze at, uh, when you get it cold enough, below zero Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, fresh water freezes, of course, at zero degrees centigrade or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's clear when it freezes, that's a freshwater iceberg. Also, each year, millions of ox in Alaska go towards the Arctic Pole. <laughs> Where are they going? Why did they not freeze? How do they come back in the spring? <laughs> There's a lot of problems. So as the earth, you know, did that spin and it got hollow inside and the heavy, heavy materials, because their, their density is different, go to the center. That's fissioning materials. So you create an inner sun, which creates a, gra a gravitational push. Gravity is a push, not a pull. It's a particle wave. So waves push on you. So it pushes the material out all around. It creates an electromagnetic dynamo that open up the poles along with that air. You saw rotating. So you have the inner earth structure there. And here's from the space, uh, one of the space stations. You can see it frozen over in the winter. <clears throat> then in the summer, it opens up. You can see the light from the internal sun coming out and the ice pack breaking up with those fresh water icebergs coming up from the fresh water seas on the inside of the, of the earth. And then the correct map, you know, people are like, you know, the earth is not shaped the way they say, or it's this or that, you know. Um, the problem is, is the Mercator map. Uh, first of all, it's upside down. <laughs> That's the first problem. The North Pole, North is up on a map. So I put North up on the map. <laughs> That's up there. People in Antarctica are up over. They're not down under. And if you look at the Mercator map, which is the black outline, if you look at the square miles of Africa, it's as large as all of Asia, as you can see on the green map, the Peter's projection map, as all of Asia and Europe. It's a massive continent. And you can see that's true here, but on this map, it's, a, it's like not even half. <laughs> it's like they've distorted the, the, what they did is when they went to conquer Africa, they didn't want the Zulu nation to realize how small the England and the British Isles were. So they made the equator move. They moved the equator. So if you look on you know, the middle of the map, if we look at the Peters projection, this is the equator about here. Well, that's, if we look at that lump there, that's yeah. like you know, way off. So, you know, there's actually the correct way with the countries thrown in um, of how the earth actually looks on a Peter's projection. And looking at the age of the earth, again, on the problem, and this is, you know, based on core samples. So everything that is not a bright color, like greens and whites, that's the really ancient stuff. That's in billions of years. But when you go into less than a billion, here's 280 million, you don't see anything on the ocean floor, hardly at all, except off the coast of Asia, that's blue. And that's only that light blue. That's where Lemuria used to sit before the Atlanteans destroyed it with particle beams. And it's down to 160 million. And then the rest of it is very young. You know, we look, you got a little bit that's ancient here, you know, off the coast of Africa and East Coast, but the majority of it is under 160 million years old. Even those areas there, that's still 160 million. It's not billions of years. So the entire thing used to be much, much smaller. And then again, looking, you know, at other planets, they also have, you can see a hollow area and an internal sun. So you can see the aurora borealis happening, coming from, not from the light of the sun, or it wouldn't be a perfect ring. 
it would be only where the sun's shining. It's coming from the sun internal, ionizing and polarizing the atmosphere you know, of the planet. And so then you go down, here it is again, perfect rings. Yeah. And here you get it with Saturn, perfect ring. Why, if the sun's over here, <laughs> would it make it over there? Why would the ring be opening up where the sun's centered? I mean, it's, uh, I mean, maybe it's, you know, gravitation, but you'll have these rings on planets when it's dark at night. So coming through the pole, the Ar Antarctic entrance comes into inner earth and you can see here coming through the system that comes through and over this is a distance in the distance are 64 pyramids you can see there this is the antarctic entrance built by the atlanteans <clears throat> this is an ancient it's called the perry reese map showing antarctica with no ice so it you know the ice age you know this part of the earth had ice but this part was ice free at that time so there's these ancient maps showing how antarctica used to be and there's the aurora borealis um, i think they call it something else in Antarct uh, australia but mm -hmm. coming from antarctica kind of obvious it's dark you know this is dark lights sun's on the other side of the earth and you can see it opening up in from the dark side <clears throat> and again centered right over antarctica and you would say, if we saw the center, would be right about there. That's, you know, where they're saying the whole, you know, the bases and all that, New Schwaberland, all that is. So here's from the space station again. And then this is, you know, going through those entrances I was talking about, um, and some others as well, Mount Apemo, under the Pyramid of Giza, King Solomon's Mines, Deborah's Caves, Ignacio Falls, Monte Grosso, Manos, Mammoth Caves in Kentucky, some more entrances. Um, Admiral Byrd's flight and his diary goes into flying in and meeting the Agarthans and coming back out. <clears throat> and this is uh, another map showing Antarctica without ice. And you can see it's literally two pieces that were cut, got forced together and got connected. And um, this is, um, I'm still working, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, I'm thinking and looking at this, you know, could be an inner earth continental map and having to evaluate that. So if we look at the tectonic plates, I mean, all of this is created less than 140 million years old. Same with this. And, you know, you can see how this all, you know, that bend right there, and this arc and bump right here, and this notch fits perfectly up in here. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So it's kind of just a drawing of the outlines, the different interests and different features, you know, of what they're saying, people are understanding and the information, trying to get out some of it. Um, so James Gilliam put this message that came from the Mehabia, um, they call themselves the Mahabians from inner earth. I thought it was quite beautiful and eloquent. We are a race of beings that went inward into a vast array of caverns during your last pole shift. We are a combination of Atlantean and Lemurian. There were already several races living on your interior, some extremely advanced, more energetic than physical. In other words, 5D, et cetera, by fifth density. To these beings, we owe our survival and the ability to continue to evolve. We are in that means uh, in the realm of ascension, not like the evolution by <laughs> the supposed theory of evolution. It's a different type of evolution. We are human. You could not recognize any differences between our people and the humans on the surface. We are more refined genetically have advanced technologies for energy, transportation, and healing. We are a very ancient civilization, builders of the megaliths and stone temples. It has always been our desire to return to the surface and unify with the rest of human, Earth humanity, using our wisdom and technology to aid in many of the challenges facing surface humanity. We have tr transcended war, disease, poverty, and lack for nothing, although our needs are simple. 
we are part of an alliance from the stars with the ability to travel hyperlight speed and interdimensionally. We are not profit driven. We prefer quality over quantity, natural over synthetic. This leaves far less a footprint on our environment, which is balanced and thriving. Before consider, considering unifying with the Terrans on the surface, the surface must find unity. In our world, there are many forms of life. Some are very evolved, others less or so. Our civilization consists of very tall beings of average height and very short beings, just as the surface, only in more variety. More races, cultures, and colors are represented in the interior. We have found that by communicating, listening intently, without judgment, releasing the past, old grudges, seeking common bonds and goals, was the path to unity, being a service to the whole community in all its diversity was first and foremost. Those blessed with abundance, higher knowledge, the ability to heal and provide effortlessly helped those less fortunate. Our civilization is dedicated to universal law, creating opportunity for each individual to reach their highest potential. Because of this, we experienced a quantum leap an evolution, leaving an abundant, loving, joyous life in harmony with each other and the environment. Terrans on the earth surface can choose to do the same. There is one prerequisite before this can start. Terrans need to unify for the common good. This means transcending all religious, cultural, and racial barriers and boundaries. Although there are many races, religions, and cultures, each individual has a soul. That soul comes from God, creator, the great spirit, the unified field of consciousness and energy, whatever name or description you want to give it. We're all family on the soul level, all connected. The source we come from in its most unlimited understanding is pure, unconditional love, joy, and bliss. Love the ultimate, everlasting power in the multiverse serves. When each individual makes their own personal connection with that source, the wars, disease, and poverty ends. It is really that simple. In getting past the complexity of the intellect, competition, fear, survival, and socially engineered ignorance of the false narrative of division that needs to be conquered. Almost all wars are wars within self, generated by wounds, traumas, wrong conclusions from past experience and limiting mental concepts. There never was a holy war. There was only one king or leader wanting what another had, using fear, religion, and division to fire up the armies. This has played out in Terran's history. The greatest of all tyrants were the most wounded and abandoned as a child, seeking love and respect, self-worth and power over others. No one ever taught them all of what is that is everlasting comes from within, and the external is transitory always changing the unquenchable thirst that never satisfies. Love, joy, happiness, approval are not to be sought externally, but within the soul, where, which is your connection to source. There you are loved, accepted and approved beyond imagination. No words can cap capsulize the creator's love. Knowing the difference between clever and wise, are also qualities of self-mastery. The intellect and altered ego are already talking you out of this, generating reasons to fail. A very ancient word in, La in Lakesh has two translations. One is greeting my other me, and the other is the God in me salutes the God in you. In some cultures, they don't even have a word for I or me. This is the foundation of our civilization. This and similar understandings once were the foundation of surface terror. They were hijacked by lesser negative forces over time. It is now time to return. Due to natural cosmic cycles, the evolution and ascension of terror is now returning to the universal law that some call unity consciousness. Is no this is no longer optional. Ours and other advanced civilizations from the stars, many of which are your ancient ancestors are here only to empower and assist in this transition. Terra has a long history of invasion and manipulation by other forces with other agendas. 
There has been an intergalactic war in the heavens as well as beneath your earth. This was to remove these unseen and seen negative influences. These wars were dimensional and temporal. The benevolent beings on the interior forces on the ex for and forces on the exterior, galactic and interdimensional beings have been successful in removing the vast majority of these influences. This is a step in the direction of ending tyranny, draconian law, and moving into universal law. The hierarchical networks of these seen and unseen negative influences on Terra still exist. They are woven into every aspect of government, religion, agency, and institution. They are known by their unbridled greed and lust for power. They do not serve the greater good. They do not empower, they overpower. These leaders and their kingdoms are not frequency specific to Terra. It's evolution into higher states of awareness or consciousness, action or react, action, reaction, or what some call karma will be amplified and accelerated. All that which cannot adapt, transform, or align with universal law will diminish or collapse entirely. It is a process no man or woman, no technology can stop. We must take the path of the mother which is phasing out of one dimension and moving into a higher consciousness and energy and a new way of life. Those who choose the path have our full support. This does not mean we will do everything for you. Everyone has to do their part, take their stand, do what is right in service to humanity and Terra. Ty tyranny lives only by agreement and ignorance. Time to wake up, rise up, unify, and join the rest of the universe in peace. A world beyond belief waits you. Excellent, Gene. And this is only to share the, you know, I'm going to call it the uh, subtle realities and the other realities that's here. And at the surface, um, to, you know, to tap to those beings that's in the undergrounds or the uh, cities or you know um yeah cities or places um probably gene uh, i'm just going to share this it's it's not a physical 3d uh, mind thinking because uh it's really i'm calling it all subtle reality so it's reality in which we were never teach during school and that's something that when you are able to experience it, people might be scared or, you know, telling you that, no, it's, you're crazy whatsoever. So, uh, Gene, I'm just going to share something from this author, so Radu Sinamore, the Romanian, um, the Romanian that actually, I'm just going to share it here. Yeah, so the Romanian that share, you know, is um, part of his uh, experiences uh, going um, inside the earth. So uh, we're going to make it quick. Uh, that's, you know, Apusini Mountain. So he's telling how he went to Apeo San Thomas's. All right. And some um, terminology to with the elements. So, Gene, we're going to make a quick move to uh inner rivers all right so i'm just gonna share this so this is the the waterfall in 80 and by now people were know me now knew that you know i had an decision here right at this exact location and you know meeting a luminous being but after my journey over there we're gonna see you see water falling, but yet when you go on top, because uh, it's a surface, when you go on top, you don't see the water. So it's only afterwards, uh, you know, by um, information that was pulsating, right? Uh, by the uh, air forces. I knew that water was coming from the inner earth. So, Gene, uh, with your knowledge on inner earth, you mentioned last time that below major 
rivers, there's inner rivers. So could you please go ahead, Gene, and explain that portion to the people? Yeah, so beneath all of the major rivers, other than the Colorado River, um, the Colorado River is an exception and the Grand Canyon were formed by the passing of uh, when the earth, if you go into um, Worlds in Collision by Velikovsky explains it and the electric universe as well. The earth has not always sat where it does now. And Venus actually passed by and as like if you ever pass by somebody and you've been walking on a carpet, you'll get a static discharge. So that when the resistance between the, you know, the potential dis difference in, is not, an, the resistance in between is not enough to resist the equalization of the charge, it'll equalize. So when Venus passed the earth, it created a static discharge that cut the Grand Canyon in a three day pass. And so, all the other rivers, if you look where they empty out into the sea, the Colorado River, up until they started damming it up, emptied into the Bay of California, pretty much. And so you don't see a delta, like off the Mississippi River, the Nile, every big river on earth has a massive delta, and this does not. And so it was actually cut by that passage. The first strike is a crater that a guy actually bought it to get the meteor that hit and he dug and dug and dug and didn't find anything. It was because it was a strike like a lightning bolt from when it first struck, which is outside of um, in feet outside of in Arizona, outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. And it's unique in the crater also, besides not having a meteor that caused that the material. Usually if you have a meteor strike as it's ejected, it inverts itself. So the newer stuff on top gets thrown out first and then the older stuff's on the top uh, around the crater rim. And this crater, it's not that case. It's the same as on the earth where the newer stuff's on top because it was burned. And so the Grand Canyon was actually created that, but all the other big rivers like the Missouri and the Mississippi and the Nile and the Amazon have huge deltas and underneath them are what are called aquifers they're massive rivers way bigger it's what they use to cut the tunnels for the submarines to go under the cut they just cut into that make a tunnel and it's already got the water flowing through there and you have massive underground rivers and then as you get deeper and deeper down you have underground ancient underground cities and tunnels and you know i when i did my dumb decodes before i showed tunnels um, and Linda McAllister showed them too in LA where they showed reptilian tunnels and all of that, Drake, the Alpha Draco had tunnels in under LA. And so when they lay subways off and they find them, uh, when they diamond mines in Africa, they, the miners, and I've actually got emails from people that have told me that when they discover a tunnel and these tunnels they discover are going at a 54 degree angle straight as an arrow literally laser straight. So they were created by a, what's called a maser or a microwave amplification, other than like a, a laser, which is a light amplification. So it cuts straight through the rock and vaporizes it. And they go for miles and miles at a 54 degree angle. And as they're digging the diamond mines, they hit these and they're told that to keep their mouth shut and seal it back up because they're not allowed to, be telling about these ancient facilities because the cabal wants to have that information and use that for their purposes. So they're threatened that their families will be killed, they'll be killed, et cetera. You know, the same old, like not the Nazis did the same exact thing. And so, you know, all of these, for example, Florida, the whole Florida Everglades and all that is actually a river that's slowly moving at about two miles an hour to the sea, the entire thing. Well, underneath that is completely another massive river that goes extremely deep. And you know, the cabal has never been telling all this, all this information about these underground ancient cities, as well as the big new ones they've built. So the earth is a combination of a hollow like donut, plus it's like a honeycomb, where you've got all kinds of groups, some that came back trying to secure their 
their future, for example, like the Amshar, that their timeline was eradicating itself. It was disappearing because of the Great Awakening. They wanted to stop the Great Awakening because that's not their timeline. And their timeline was starting to disappear. So they came back 10 million years and created a large underground city in the, you know, like all these honeycomb tunnels and all of that. So like mammoth caves, like I showed with that map, it goes all the way to the center of the earth. But that cave system goes through most of the northeastern part of the United States. It goes all over the place and they're, you know, underplaying how massive it is. Like the same thing with Carl's Bad Caverns and Lechuga, which are actually connected. And they, they go all over and they get deeper and deeper and go vast, vast, vast. And then they lock them up so nobody can get in there and say, you know, and underplay the size of it. And so there's these ancient, ancient caves. And some of them are actually what are called apens or power nodes. And some negative races created some. And then there's the ones that are created to keep the Earth's energy systems aligned. Like the ones they show in Mes Mexico they found with crystals that are 50 60 feet long mm -hmm. and there's you know and it, you can't stay in there very long it's extremely hot in there but you know the they are these massive crystal caves that help control the energy structures and the ley lines and the chakra system of the earth there you go exactly thank you Tarina. so Tarina, so you can see how massive these crystals are. You have to have those suits on because it's incredibly hot. The <laughs> guy looks like they look like ants walking around in there, don't they? <laughs> 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 this is how big they are. You look like an ant compared to these crystals. So I mean, it's they're beautiful, but it's in, you know an energy structure that is there to help the Earth's energy field and we all know you know they use crystals in computers and in watches it sets time it sets vibration it it's timing it stores information and so all of this is storing the history of the earth and storing the information about the species and plants and animals and civilizations and keeping time and keeping the energy structure for the entire earth Thank you, Gene. And with that being said, Gene, we're going to make a smooth transition. So then again, um, your consciousness, you see, uh, the frequency of it allows to tap to those uh, realities and subtle realities and other worlds. So now, Gene, we're going to, uh, the people, we're going to uh, jump now to that section here, mystical place at Colorado. So specifically choose Colorado because that's where Gene, you know, it's dwelling. So like we're seeing here, guarding of the gods, uh, can think of Mesa Verde, uh, National Park. Um, as well, Gene, you mentioned um, through one of your Dom's Decode where Boulder, Colorado, on the knee, there was a EM, uh, EMC center, right? Well, they would pulsate um electromagnetic manning fields uh to uh, alter people's um uh thoughts and everything uh international yeah. denver uh we all knows knows it well almost almost all the major airports below there's um so probably now focusing now gene on the uh, mystical places mm -hmm. uh please share to the people what you yeah experience in what you know well of course garden of the gods is actually um a part of the morrison fold it's what it's called morrison sandstone that's why it has red the next layer down it's called wingate which is a whiter stone you can see some of it in here but it, you know even the native americans said that this was a very sacred place and um that runs across the the foothills part of the colorado rockies and the um where the inland sea, and if you go up towards the I-70 highway, uh, between that and Highway 285, you have on this Morrison Fold, a area that where the Diplodoc was actually used to walk around the inland sea and Brachiosaurus footprints are there. So there's on the Morrison Fold, 
between I-70 and 285, you can go up there. It's called Dinosaur Ridge by some because you can see Diplodocus footprints. And they actually used to have, used to have Brachiosaurus footprints. But the problem with it was when I was six, seven years old, we would go up there and there were human footprints besides the Brachiosaurus footprints. So now you can see the, what are called the pock marks. They cut off the whole huge chunk of rock and removed it. It's kind of obvious because it's not aged. You know, rock to sandstone to get aged takes thousands of years. <laughs> this is not only, you know, not even a hundred years ago, they cut it away. So it's bright, but now you just have the Brachiosaurus pock marks where the foot went into the mud and it's poking through and they, you can see it from underneath and the top whole top of it's gone and they go it made pockmarks <laughs> no that used to actually be a footprint there with a human footprint beside it so showing again you know the age of the earth and uh, the artifacts all over the world like if you go into uh, monument valley uh in the southern parts of colorado going into utah and and arizona in those areas again you can see pockmarks and dinosaur footprints and those are all, you know, Monument Valley stretches up into Colorado as well as as another sacred area for the Native Americans that really understood the, the structure of the earth and um, the energy structures of the earth. And so, you know, these huge buttes, as you see, I've hiked around a lot of those, you get time anomalies. And we were doing an op down there, removing a satanic nest actually and it was completely clear sky and pretty hot. It was, you know, early summer, so it was not bakingly hot, but it was clear, it was dry as a bone. And then a big three mile long cigar shaped cloud generated itself. <laughs> like, okay. And you know, I couldn't help it because a little guy came down in his stealth suit and my third eye is wide open and he, I, he, I finally waved. <laughs> because he was so cute a little triangle guy golden triangle guy and he got out stopped his appendage lower appendage beam back to the ship and then uh, leonora came down and goes sorry about that gene he goes what do you got <laughs> what what report of what happened i go sure i go give my apologies but he was so cute i couldn't help myself and he goes yeah he was like what's he was saying what the leonor was talking what's the point of a stealth suit if he can look at you he goes well you're dealing with gene <laughs> his eye is open <laughs> so it was kind of funny but it's a very sacred area as well and then of course the satanists always use that to try to hijack it so we can clean that yeah. mess there uh, another actual um, very sacred area is if you go towards the um, Sangre de Cristo range, there's what's called phantom cliffs on the Sangre de Cristo range uh, on the uh, western slope of it. Um, and that is a very phenomenal trail system that literally crosses across the surface of the cliff. And there's so a Jean, lot of valleys. Yes, sir. What's the name? Phantom Cliffs. Phantom, all right. Mm -hmm. And you're literally, I mean, to get my my husky, my my wife's husky across, my I had to take mine across first. She's not, she doesn't have fear. <laughs> my wife was like, no way. <laughs> it's three feet wide, a thousand feet off the ground. <laughs> I cross it, that's right in the middle of the cliff. You're out of your mind. <laughs> but it's a beautiful trail and very near that area. There's actually a certain area that I know that creates massive time distortions. Is so, that that one, Gene, as well? Phantom Canyon? Is that the same one? No, it's Phantom Cliffs, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. And while we're here, Gene, uh, Cheyenne Mountain. Yeah. This, this was a yeah. Go ahead, Gene. That's the dumb for NORAD. Yeah. Which was which was disclosed in the nineties in the uh, what's yeah. called the Stargate series, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stargate series. This <laughs> is like I, I love how even in the series they they debunk the series by debunking the series with a debunk of the series, a wormhole extreme, <laughs> which is debunking the first one, which is debunking the real one, which is debunking what is really there. I'm like, wow, they're putting you in your face multiple multiple times. Uh, Manitou cliff dwellings, you have the ancient petroglyphs there, as you're seeing, that's another sacred area mm -hmm. that's in Colorado too. And these uh, drawings that you see, these petroglyphs are actually writing 
that's a form of writing that the Europeans destroyed all the information on how to read it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it is showing, if you look at it, you can see non-terrestrial beings drawn mm -hmm. in there. It's mm -hmm. pretty obvious <laughs> when you look at it. And craft, you know, they're showing craft and all kinds of different information. And, you know, of course, if you're traveling, they're going to show you things of importance, like where's the nearest water and where's the good hunting sites and where do you go and how far you go and they're going to show you know battles they've had with non-terrestrial negative groups and that they got you know off the planet and you know how they did it and explain it all so consider the fact that the native americans used wikiops they didn't have you know the horse and the wheel. you know later they got the horse and they got the wheel but you have some ancient carvings with wheels those aren't wheels mm -hmm. Those are craft that they're seeing in the air. Mm -hmm. Like in Ezekiel, he saw, went out in the desert, he saw a wheel within a wheel. Well, if you were 2,000 years ago and you don't have any of the technological words we have today, how would you describe that? I mean, how would you describe a flying saucer, a wheel within a wheel with cherubim, flame, you know, light, flame, whatever? You know, you have to use the terminology of the time. It's they've been here. There's pictures in the 1700s with you know, paintings with with craft in the air behind them. So, you know, and in these sacred sites, the the good guys would come down all the time. They called them the Native Americans, call them the star people. And mm -hmm. the code I did in the San Luis Valley on the Great Sand Dunes area, which is another sacred area, the ant people took the Native Americans during a time of you know rain of fire inside the earth and save their lives and so that's another very you know sacred place to the native americans along with um there's a clip a castle like structure that is to the far south eastern edge of the san Luis valley that they used to tell time kind of like adam's calendar in africa and so there's that structure as well that's very sacred and then down towards the pagosa springs area there's another area in there that is very sacred uh, in the white Manuch wilderness area and then also in the um sam wants near you're very close to where um dallas is there's a sacred area there that's just a few miles over across the border into colorado San, San, San Juan? San Juan, yep, San Juan Mountain Range. Mm -hmm. They call oh. it the South San Juans. South, okay, sounds good. Thank you, Gene. So with that said, Gene, uh, these, we got, I'm going to say it's to access those places or those frequencies. It's not with a day-to-day -day physical uh, thinking. You see, um, a lot of it has to go with your consciousness and your, you know, fre uh, vibrational frequency. So, Gene, uh, before we leave, probably with your experience with Qigong, um, could you share a technique in order that the people could or can um, expand or, you know, ascend or augment their vibrational frequencies, please. Yeah, so part of uh, one style I know, which is fire flower qigong, if you do a technique called pushing the sky, I use that. You can see a lot of little Buddha statues out of sandalwood mm -hmm. where they have their palms facing up straight over their head. And then you, you know, I do the sun gazing and I bring the light of the Holy Spirit into me and the word of God in and use the, the sound of the word of God at the different levels as you go down to, to raise my frequency up. Oh, you keep, keep, you keep, keep going, Jim. Oh, I thought you were going to share something there. No, 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 no. It's all good. Okay, so yeah, I'd be, I have a video I've made. I just haven't gotten it cleaned up yet of doing Manchigong, mm -hmm. which is tens of thousands of years old, and it balances all of your chakras and everything else. 
all at the same time. And in that, um, it's um, very powerful. Um, but there's most of the ones you find, they lose the last two techniques. So I put them back in. So you have seven because God's creation runs on cycles of seven, like seven is neutral water pH. There are seven primary tectonic plates. There are seven continents, seven colors in the rainbow, et cetera. So for those energy systems, when you do that, of course we have seven energy systems within our body, little um, fiber optic balls, so like little computers that help coordinate between the levels of the body, the organs at that level. So all the organs are co coordinated and all the energy those fiber optics run through the entire body. It's one of our three, again, sacred geometry, um, representing the Holy Trinity of our circulatory system. So we have the cardiovascular, lymphatic, and then the acupuncture meridian system, which are literally fiber optics that carry ultraviolet light throughout the body. They've actually now detected it. So the best one to start with would be pushing the sky. It's pretty simple. And when I Thank get you. the yep, video, I'll load those up. Yep. Appreciate it, Gene. And Gene, um, with you know, with what's going on, but now, um, hopefully, people are embracing you know the uh, different realities uh, that's on a different density, or you know, beings on the different densities, or like we saw here, you know, underground cities. All right, uh, we haven't talked today about. Uh, what's in the uh, different uh, upper layers of the atmosphere, but at least uh, knowing that on the subterranean, uh, yes, indeed, it is another world. So, Gene, um, based on your experience, would you mind sharing uh, words of wisdom to anyone, you know, to ease their perspective or their comprehension with dealing with other realities or higher vibrational realities for me i just focus on the word of god light of the holy spirit and the gift of the only begotten son and i calm myself and then by focusing in the word of the god which um there's a group of ancient master adepts that call it the ek it just means the sound that god used the word that created all things so it as it goes down density it changes in the sound of it so at the third density where we are it kind of sounds like uh rain on a roof like a static sound then at the fourth density it sounds like bees at the fifth density it sounds like conch shell or the tibetan horn then at the sixth density it starts to sound like wind winds flutes and then at the seventh density sounds like full, which is the soul level. It sounds like full orchestrational uh, pieces like Beethoven or Bach or things like that. So I focus on that um, and then, you know, focus on the light of the Holy Spirit and then whatever I need to do, you know, on the problems and all of that and the issues, it calms you. And then, you know, if I petition or do prayer or my invocation, I always center first that way. All right, so you heard Gene for the last almost an hour, yeah, in 40 minutes, all right? So Gene, thank you. Like you saw, a lot of people from different places are hearing you. So what's good now is people at least, you know, are bounding together wherever they had, wherever, you know, um, their style of thinking, their, you know, I'm going to say subculture, but the thing is, it's all about the truth and rising as a collective. So to the people we had here today, Gene Decode on the Galactic Talk Session 34. And Gene, as always, it's a pleasure and an honor. Thank you, Taino. Likewise, it's always an honor to have be on your platform. I really appreciate it. Thank you. God all bless. Right. And Gene, uh, for the, um, would you mind sharing to the people probably your updated uh, platforms when they can reach your information? Yeah, so for now, still the Gmail is Colo, C-O-L-O-S-E-N-S-E-I-6-4 at gmail.com. Um, then uh, again, we're hoping by the end of the week, <laughs> 
to or this week to have the uh, Bless for Service website up, which will be blessforservice.org. We're in beta testing and ironing out the bugs finally. So looking to have that up then um, after that, we'll proceed to get a GND code website up. So that'll be hopefully by the beginning of next year. But we're hoping Bless for Services up and you know that'll be people can get protocols and all kinds of things and information just go there free no charge excellent and gene i want to thank you because it's your one two three four fifth time on the galactic talk so you know what gratitude for your time oh uh, thank you gratitude for your time too Dino. all right so you heard gene Dico, uh ladies and gentlemen so you know, with Gene's requests, uh, we're going to have another session and I'm probably going to ask the people if they have a specific topic, but uh, we're going to keep, you know, uh, sharing what Gene's has accumulated over the, you know, decades and decades, all right, of personal experiences, all right, to different degrees. So then again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. All right. So thank you to Gene. We have Andrew. Uh, Andrew, uh, welcome. Uh, I know you would want to probably ask a question to Gene, but we got to go. But you no, know, it will be for our next time. All right. Thank you, Tana. Okay, sounds good. So, Gene, uh, you know, blessings to you, blessings to your wife. All right. And we'll catch up for another one. Thank you, Tano. Blessings to you, your wife, and your children. God bless, and God bless all of you, and Godspeed to the Great Awakening. Thank you, Gene. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Session 34 again with Gene Decode. See you next time, guys.